As you may have heard, the Kremlin has put Russia's nuclear forces, the largest in the world, on high alert, and has stated that NATO's financial sanctions are akin to an act of war. In response, the U.S. Defense Secretary has played down the threat of nuclear war, saying Mr. Putin is touting his arsenal in a battle of rhetoric. However, a Canadian financial research company, BCA Research, has said there's a 10% chance of civilization being destroyed in a nuclear apocalypse. So, what is an investor to do? Well, according to the same research firm, clients should stay bullish on stocks and largely ignore existential risks as their investments will become irrelevant if the Ukraine crisis leads to nuclear Armageddon. BCA continued that despite the risk of nuclear war, it makes sense to stay constructive on stocks over the next 12 months. If a ICBM is heading your way, the size and composition of your portfolio becomes irrelevant. Thus, from a purely financial perspective, you should largely ignore existential risk. Now there's a firm trying to make a buck. So, before we go the way of the dinosaurs, Let's take a look at the charts. And today we're going to take a look at two charts beginning here with a six month daily on the spiders the SPY and the close on Tuesday was 449.59. So finally we're starting to get that uh, completion of the W formation that we've been looking for for such a long time. And we moved up and through the 20 EMA and the 50 EMA. We only had a slight pause yesterday and then again today up again. So I think we may hit some resistance once we get to that level there which is just under 460 and then of course we're looking to get up here to the previous high around that 480 but perhaps look for some resistance at this point because everybody else is going to be looking at that as well. Here in volume you can see the decline in the last few days and that's not uh, real good news. It's not bad. We're moving on up but with declining volume the move on up is weakening here in the Mac you can see the maximum negativity at that point medium negativity and just a little bit of negativity and then the fast line had the strength to move up and through that slow line it just popped through that zero line so it's continuing to accelerate with the uh, separation between the fast line there and the slow line here but again let's look for some resistance coming soon it's still not real strong you can see here in the histogram we have gone a long way so the market is going to need to take a breath moving up here into the price rate of change that looks decent both the fast and slow lines are above that zero or mid lines so looking back here at these previous levels we've exceeded that level there we're moving in on this level here and then the highest at least on the six month is at that point there so I would imagine we'll get up to that uh, 25 level here soon enough and maybe we'll uh, hold still for a while we'll just have to wait and see here uh, the RSI is definitely moving on up all the way up to a level of 69.37 so it's strengthening and I think that's going to want to hit that 80 level get into that overbought territory between 80 and 100. The Socastics has already moved up there at least the fast line the slow line will make it up there pretty soon too and then of course the Williams leading all the oscillators it's been up there wondering where the rest of the oscillators have been. Back up here to the price chart one last look at that W formation and let's now go to the weekly chart. And now to the three year weekly chart on the spiders and as you can see here we had this channel line moving the bottom line through here and then the top line more or less through there. It's not a straight line but you get the idea. We broke below that and as we did back here in early 2020 but we made our way on up and of course into the channel line are we going to make our way up 
back into that channel line? Well, only time will tell. Right now, though, the uh, the move does look decent. Nice move on down here, bottom and basing, and then the move on up. We still have a ways to go. I would expect some resistance again up to this area here, which more or less will coincide to that bottom channel line. Those things tend to be some kinds of resistance, but we'll wait and see what happens. Here in volume, the volume on the weekly actually does look better with an increase here, but of course you have an increase with a decline, but hopefully we can continue to have some relatively decent green volume. Moving on down here into the MAC. Now, the difference between the fast line here and the slow line here, even though we're at that zero line, there's still enough of a separation for sideways trading and some volatility. Back here, the move was so strong, we just went right up and through. I don't think we necessarily have that strength here. So there is, again, room for volatility sideways trading. So be careful. Here into the histogram, looks nice. Nice bottom basing and the move on up. The rest of these oscillators are also going to be relatively decent here. Price rate of change, a bit of sawtoothing there. And then, of course, the RSI moving on up above that 50 or midline. The stochastics is uh, taking its time, but still we have the fast line move through that slow line here, so a definite bottom and basing here. Not really unlike back here in early 2020, but we're just not as strong as we were back then. Here into the Williams, the Williams is crawling out above that mid or 50 line, so that does look good too. Back up here to the price chart, one last look, I would say the probabilities are that we continue on up, but be prepared for some volatility. And for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.